All right, we're finally getting around to the second video here on photosynthesis, and we're not in my living room this time, so yay. So we should all be very familiar with the basic formula for photosynthesis. We start off with carbon dioxide, water, and like energy, and that's going to give us glucose and oxygen. But what we're going to do in this video is actually look into the chloroplast and see how this reaction is occurring. Before we continue talking about photosynthesis, I want to discuss the different parts of both the chloroplast and the plant as a whole to show you where all of these things are occurring. So starting with our reactants and a uh, bigger scale here, we have carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is entering through the stomata or the stoma if it's one. Uh, the stomata look like this. They have two guard cells on the outside that do actually open and close. It's really quite fascinating. This is what I did my uh, senior paper on in college in my undergrad, uh, was how pollution is affecting the rate of uh, guard cell closure. So this is where carbon dioxide is entering into our, uh, our plant. Next we have water. Water is coming up through the roots and through the xylem all the way up to the leaf where photosynthesis is occurring. And finally, we have light. This can be from both sunlight or, as you saw in our lab, it can also come from just a light bulb. Now, when light energy is entering into our leaf, it's through, uh, through photons. Photons are then absorbed by the chlorophyll. Chlorophyll are actually right here in the thylakoid membranes, uh, which are inside the chloroplast, and the chlorophyll are actually a pigment that uh, appear green to us because it absorbs all the visible light energy um, or the spectrum with the exception of green. In a sense, it's reflected off, so that's why it appears green. So that's where our photons are going into the chlorophyll. All right, our chloroplast here has several different parts. Uh, our stack of thylakoids is known as the granum, and the extra space in here is our stroma, not to be confused with stoma. Uh, stroma is the extra space where our dark reaction or our light independent reaction or Calvin cycle uh, is occurring. Now, the tricky thing with bio is that we have a ton of different names for pretty much the same thing. So you'll hear it in a, uh, a variety of ways. But that's where our dark reaction is occurring. Our light reaction is actually occurring in the thylakoid, which is these uh, the individual uh, discs that make up the granum. We're going to start off talking about the light dependent reactions, which do require light in order to uh, occur. This is the first part of photosynthesis. So as a reminder, we are starting photosynthesis with light, water, and carbon dioxide. Our light dependent reactions are focusing in on light and water. Carbon dioxide will come into play later on in the Calvin cycle. Now, after I explain all of this, I will put a picture up on the screen for you guys to take a look at actually how all of this is occurring. We're going to start off in the photosystem, in photosystem two. In photosystem two, we are doing two things. We are absorbing light and causing the electrons to become excited or activated. We are also taking in water and breaking up water. We end up with, instead of H2O, with a hydrogen ion, H+, and O2. As you might recall, O2 is our first product of photosynthesis. So as you can see, it's formed really early on, and is from here released out into the atmosphere, which is great for us, because we require oxygen in order to survive. All right. After photosystem one, we move into the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is going to take our high energy electrons and our uh, hydrogen ion and transport them inside the thylakoid. Uh, after that, we go to photosystem one. 
Photosystem 1 is using the electrons and hydrogen ions to turn NADP plus, let's go here, NADP plus then becomes NADPH, picking up that hydrogen ion. Uh, after the after photosystem one occurs, we actually have a hydrogen ion movement, which is going to make the outside of the thylakoid membrane more negative and make the lumen inside the thylakoid uh, more positive. Finally, we are going to have uh, ADP, which is already present, as was well NADP plus because of that constant cycle between the light reaction and the Calvin cycle. So we are going to take ADP. And through ATP uh, synthase, we are going to move um, hydrogen ions outside the membrane. And through that, we are causing the formation of ATP. Now, as you can see, we ended up with NADPH and ATP. So it's important to take note of these guys because those are two of the things necessary for the Calvin cycle to begin, along with our last one here, carbon dioxide. Moving on here, we have the Calvin cycle, also known as a light independent reaction, and it used to be called the dark reaction. All right, I've circled our products from our light reaction. Here we have carbon dioxide, well, not a product from light reaction, but one that we have not used yet was carbon dioxide. We had ATP and we had NADPH. Now, the Calvin cycle is extremely complicated, and we could spend a lot of time going in depth about it, but luckily you don't need to know too much more than what I'm gonna put on the board. Uh, we are going to have carbon dioxide enter into the Calvin cycle. We actually have three molecules of carbon dioxide. The first step that's going to occur is our carbon fixation. After that, we're moving into our second step, which is reduction. Now this is where our ATP, we actually use uh, six ATP and six NADPH molecules here. I'll add that once again. Is uh, in reduction, the ATP becomes ADP and our NADPH becomes NADP, oh, NADP plus. Those two things, ADP and NADP+, were both used in the light reaction, so that really shows you how cyclic all of this is. After reduction, this is where we're getting the formation of glucose. As you can see, we are using three carbon dioxide molecules, six ATP molecules, six NADPH molecules. There's a lot going on here just to produce one single glucose molecule. After that glucose is produced, then we have uh, RUBP uh, regenerated here. So that is our third step. Luckily, you don't need to worry about that too much. But what's important to know out of the Calvin cycle is that we are starting with carbon dioxide, ATP, and NADPH, and that is giving us one molecule of glucose. I'm going to leave it here for this video, but what I want you to know is that this, kind of like what we did before when we we're looking at that ATP and NADPH, is this is what we're left with. This is our product. We are left with glucose. That glucose is then used in cellular respiration, continuing that cyclic uh, pattern.